So in part C of problem 28, we want to calculate the hazard rate of x. So we have a stochastic variable x, which is uniformly distributed on 0 to b. So that means it has density given by f of x equal to 1 over b if x lies between 0 and b, and 0 otherwise. Now we are asked to find the hazard rate, lambda. So one of the first things we remember is that lambda of x, the hazard rate, is uh, best defined when x is non-negative according to the book anyways uh, because it says in section 2 5 let x greater than equal to 0 have a density f so 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 the hazard rate is well defined first and foremost since x is non-negative and the version that we get in section 2 5 is the continuous hazard rate so that is the one that we will use here since we here assume that x is continuous so by the book's formula we get that the hazard rate is given by this thing over here so lambda of x is equal to the density of x divided by the survival function so what is the survival function again so let us just recall that the survival function of x is given by 1 minus the distribution function uh, so the survival function, in contrast to the distribution function, is the probability that x is greater than some value little x, whereas the distribution function was the probability that x is smaller than or equal to some little x. Now, if we have to calculate the distribution function uh, using our density, the way we do that is by integrating the density on a set that is given by this event here uh, and that set is well uh, the set of values that x can attain according to this event which is anything between little x and infinity so let us start off this exercise by finding the distribution functions expression f bar of x so f bar of x is the probability that x is greater than some value little x and that is equal to the integral from little x to infinity because that is the values that x can obtain uh, in this event and we integrate the density and note that i use the integrator y because x is already taken we use that for the for the boundary dy now Whenever we do this, it's quite important that we ask, what do we let little x be? So before we write all of this stuff up, we actually, we should go back. Um, again, this is not something that is that important during the exam, but it is just so good to have in your repertoire, uh, the ability to be just a little bit rigorous uh, now and then. So let's start this off by considering what the distribution function would be for different values of little x. So first we look at the density and we see x can lie between 0 and b. That means the interesting point is well, if x is smaller than 0, that is interesting. And then we have if x lies between 0 and b, that's also interesting. And then we have if x is greater than or equal to b, which is also interesting. Because at any of those points, something special happens. The density is first 0, and then at 0, it jumps up to 1 over b, and at b, it jumps down to 0 again. So when we find any integral of this thing here, it's kind of important that we think about these cases. So let's start up here. If x is smaller than or equal to 0, then 
the survival function. So the probability that x is greater than little x, well, it is just equal to 1, right? Because the probability that x is greater than 0 is sure it is greater than 0 because it's impossible for it to be anything else than greater than 0. It's defined on the positive axis. So if x is smaller than or equal to 0, then the survival function is just equal to 1. Now, if x is greater than or equal to b, then what is the survival function? Well, then the probability that our stochastic variable is greater than x. Well, we're looking at a, a, a x here now, and this is b. So what is the probability that our stochastic variable exceeds this value? Well, it's 0. Because outside of the interval 0 to b, the density has value 0. So this is equal to 0. Now, if x lies between 0 and b, so if x lies, so this is 0 and this is b. Now, if x lies somewhere in here, then it gets interesting. Because then the probability that x is greater than this value, little x, is something that we get by integrating from this value little x and upwards. So that's where it becomes interesting. Then the probability that our stochastic variable is greater than little x is given by the integral from x up to infinity of the density with respect to y. And we use y because we already have x out here. And Note that the density is 1 over b, and the density vanishes outside of 0 to b, so we get that the integral is just given by the integral from x to b of 1 multiplied by 1 over b, and that is equal to b minus x divided by b. So for all cases that are interesting, <laughs> the survival function is b minus x over b. So that's the interesting part, right? So so we should put a circle around the interesting part here, which is this thing. So what is the hazard rate? The hazard rate, lambda of x, well, where are we interested in that hazard rate? Well, we're interested in that hazard rate for x greater than 0, right? So for x greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, lambda of x is equal to the density, which is just 1 over b, and then divided by the survival function, which is b minus x divided by b for x greater than 0. And smaller than b anyways. And this is equal to, let's see, 1 over b minus x, right? So we should just kind of remember that what we have is that the hazard function is defined as such for x lying between 0 and b. And for, b, for x lying above b, well, it's actually non-existent because you can't divide by 0, right? You can't divide uh, anything by 0, but this value down here is equal to 0 if x is greater than b. So, so the hazard function exists on uh, 0 to b, or the hazard rate, we should call it the hazard rate. Now, uh, we also are asked, is the hazard rate increasing or decreasing? So increasing or decreasing? And, well, that, that part is kind of easy. Uh, so what can we see here? We can see that if x gets larger, then b minus x gets smaller, right? And if b minus x gets smaller, then 1 over b minus x gets larger. So hence, 
lambda of x is increasing in x. And what can we understand from this if we have a hazard rate that's increasing? Well, according to the discussion in the book, that means that this distribution is better suited for what? Well, it is better suited for modeling life insurance. So it's better suited for modeling lifetimes than for modeling claims in non-life insurance. Well, to be honest, I don't think it's that suited to model anything really in neither life or non-life because, come on, it's the uniform distribution. Uh, it has nothing interesting in it. But, uh, but that's what we can conclude. The uniform distribution has an increasing... Uh, has an increasing... Uh, what am I trying to say? Has an increasing... Uh, hazard rate. Uh, so according to the discussion in the book, it's better for modeling lifetimes uh, than it is for modeling claims. Uh, but in any case, uh, we don't really like to have any distribution modeling lifetimes where, <laughs> where the probability that the lifetime is 10 is equal to the probability that the lifetime is 20, for example. So um, uh, this is just mostly a theoretic example.